What comes to mind when you hear the question, what are the main causes of malnutrition for children in America? Fast food culture, reliance on television and video games to entertain, and or the lack of exercise? All of these things are certainly related, but there is another basic cause that many overlook, poverty. In 2008, 22.5% of school-aged children lived in households where the family was not financially capable of providing the level of nutrition recommended by our national nutrition guidelines. This figure was almost double what it was just a year before, and this was at a time when national unemployment rates were between 5 and 6 percent. Now, in 2010, we face an unemployment rate of between 9 and 10 percent, and an increasing rate of poverty. The number of children in nutrition-stable homes will continue to decline with the current economic situation. While one obvious long-term solution is to continue working to stabilize the economy, doing that alone can only get us back to where we were before with nearly a quarter of the country's children in homes where the family is incapable of providing food that meets the recommended nutritional values. These families were in dire financial positions before the current recession began, and many of them will face the same challenges they always have after this crisis is solved. Fortunately, questions of what can be done have already been at least partially answered. In 1946, President Truman signed into law the National School Lunch Program, which, since then, has expanded to provide over 31 million students with free or subsidized priced lunches in 2009 alone. Every one of these meals is required to meet the standards set forth by the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. The question, then, is why stop at just lunch? The United States Department of Agriculture, which manages the National School Lunch Program, clearly agrees with this sentiment, at least in part. Just this summer, the Child and Adult Care Food Program was expanded to provide dinner to students near the poverty line enrolled in eligible after-school programs in several states. But these programs are not available in every neighborhood. Only a fraction of the country's at-risk children are eligible to receive this additional meal. Why should we stop there? The CACFP is tied to these after-school programs, so working through it will likely not provide the same sort of coverage as the NSLP, which works exclusively through schools. Therefore, it is my belief that the National School Lunch Program should be expanded nationwide to give these at-risk students a healthy option for breakfast and a take-home dinner, using the same methods already utilized to provide these healthy lunches. The NSLP is an excellent use of federal funding, but for the 31 million students that use it, it's only doing a third of its job. We eat three meals a day. To ensure that at-risk children have access to just one that meets the National Nutritional Guidelines is not solving the problem. Please, if you agree, or if you have your own ideas about how to help alleviate the problems of childhood malnutrition due to poverty, write your state representatives, the United States Department of Agriculture, or one of the many child advocacy interest groups that work in this area. Check the description of this video for links to the contact information of several relevant interest groups and the USDA. Thank you for listening. When I was young, so much younger than today. I never